Properties of logarithms. Our objective is to use properties to simplify logarithmic expressions, as well as translate between logarithms in any base. Who uses this? Seismologists use properties of logarithms to calculate the energy released by earthquakes. Let's start with the product property of logarithms. It's similar to when you're multiplying like bases with exponents. So the logarithm of a product is equal to the sum of the logarithms of its factors. So say you have log base 3 of 1,000. Well, 10 times 100 make, make up two of the factors of 1,000. So if we have log base 3 of 10 plus the log base 3 of 100, that's the same thing as saying log base 3 of 1,000. Let's practice. So we have log base 4 of 2 plus the log base 4 of 32. Well, this is the same as saying log base 4 of 2 times 32. So log base 4 of 64, which equals 3. You can think of this as 4 to the what gives you 64. Let's try this next one. We have log base 5 of 625 plus log base 5 of 25. This is the same as saying log base 5 of 625 times 25. Well, that means we've got log base 5 of 15,625, which equals 6. So it's like saying 5 to the what power gives you 15,625, and that would be to the 6th power. This one gets a little bit tricky. So we have the log base 1 third, and then 27 times 1 ninth, which is the same as saying the log base 1 third of 3. So we're essentially saying 1 third to the what power is going to give us 3. Well, to reverse a fraction and basically flip it upside down, we want the negative 1 power, so therefore this must equal negative 1. Let's look at the quotient property of logarithms now. The logarithm of a quotient is the logarithm of the dividend minus the logarithm of the divisor. So we have log base 5 of 16 divided by 2. That's going to be the same as log base 5 of 16 minus log base 5 of 2. So just like we added when we were multiplying, well, when we divide, we're going to use subtraction. So let's practice a couple. So we have log base 2 of 32 minus log base 2 of 4. Well, since we're subtracting logs, we can write it as a single logarithm by dividing. So we have log base 2 of 32 divided by 4, which is the same as log base 2 of 8. So this is kind of asking 2 to the what power gives us 8? Well, that would be the third power, so the answer is 3. Okay, express log base 7 of 49 minus log base 7 of 7 as a single logarithm. Take a moment and pause the video and try this one on your own. 
When you return, the answer will be revealed below. So since we subtract our logs to write it as a single logarithm, we will divide. So we have 49 divided by 7, which is in fact 7. So log base 7 of 7, whenever you have a base being the same as what it is, you're going to just say that's 1, because 7 to the what gives you 7. Well, 7 to the first power gives you 1. Okay. Let's try the power property of logarithms. The logarithm of a power is the product of the exponent and the logarithm of the base. Think of it this way. It's kind of like taking this exponent and just dropping it down in front. So let's look at the algebraic example to the right. So we have log base b of a to the p. You take your exponent and you bring it down in front, so you're going to find the product of the exponent and the logarithm of the base. So your power comes down in front, and then you multiply log base b of a. Let's look at a few examples. I think that will clear it up. So let's express it as a product, and then simplify if we can. So we have an exponent here, because it's log base 3 of 81 to the second power. So this second power is going to come down in front. So now we have 2 times the log base 3 of 81. If you need to, you can even write a little multiplication symbol in there. Well, log base 3 of 81, that's the same as saying 4, because 3 to the 4th power is 81. So we have 2 times 4, which is 8. Let's try another one. So we have log base 5 of 1 fifth to the third power. We're going to take the exponent and we're going to bring it down in front. So now we have 3 times log base 5 of 1 fifth. Well, log base 5 of 1 fifth, that's the same as saying 5 to the what power gives us 1 fifth? Well, that's negative 1. So we have 3 times negative 1, which gives us the result negative 3. Let's try C. Log base 5 of 25 to the second power. Take your 2 and bring it down in front. So we have 2 times the log base 5 of 25. So log base 5 of 25 is the same as saying 2, because 5 squared is 25. So we have 2 times 2, which equals 4. Well, I forgot to write a letter in here, so let's do D. <laughs> okay. Whenever you don't see a base, you're going to assume that that base is 10. So whenever there's not a base, it's an assumption that it's 10. I like to think of it as because of the fact that we have a base 10 number system, so it makes sense. All right, take a moment and pause the video and see if you can do D on your own. When you return, the answer will be revealed right below. So the 4 comes down in front. So we have 4 times log base 10 of 10. Whenever your base is the same, you have 1. So log base 10 of 10 is 1. So 4 times 1 is, in fact, 4. Alright, so now let's look at inverse properties of logarithms and exponents. So with this, we're going to look at the base of our logs and the number that's there. So we have log base b of b to the x. Notice how both of these are the same and then when you simplify it's going to be what your exponent is. Well what if you had 
b as the base of your or your power, so you have b to the log base b of x. Notice how both of them are the same. That means when you simplify, it's going to simply be x. Let's look at a couple of examples. We have log base 10 of 10 to the seventh power. Both of these are the same, which means when you simplify, it's simply going to be your exponent, which is 7. Same here. We have 10 to the log base 10 of 2. Notice how both of them are 10. They don't have to be 10. They just have to be the same. And then your simplified answer will end up being what the log is of, in this case, 2. Let's try a few. Okay, so we have log base 8 of 8 to the 3x plus 1. These are the same, so when you were to simplify with the log, you just end up with 3x plus 1. This one's a little bit trickier. Reason being is all you have is log base 5 to the 125. However, we can rewrite 125. Think of it this way. 125 is the same thing as saying 5 times 5 times 5, which is the same as saying 5 to the third. So we have log base 5 of 5 to the third. Now we have our base and what our log is of as the same thing, so we know that when we simplify, we're left with 3. So with this one, we have 2 to the log base 2 of 27. We, both, we have a 2 in both parts. So therefore, when you simplify, you end up with 27. Let's look at the change of base formula. When you have log base b of 10 equals the log base a of x over the log base a of b. You can think of it in terms of log base 4 of 8, for example. This would be the same as saying log base 2 of 8 divided by the log base 2 of 4. There are a few different ways we can go about this, and I think some of the examples will help you out. So let's look at this first one. We're going to evaluate log base 4 of 8. Method 1 is going to be great if you have a calculator available. So to make it so that it's easy to use a calculator, a calculator likes seeing everything in base 10. So therefore, if we think of it in terms of this first one here, we're just going to use 10 as our a. So we have log base 10 of 8 divided by the log base 10 of 4. Notice how I didn't write the base 10 in, because it's assumed if it's not written. And when you enter this in the calculator, you're going to end up with 1.5. Well, that's fine and dandy if you have a calculator, but what if you don't? That's when method 2 comes in handy. We're going to change the base to 2, because both 4 and 8 are powers of 2. So this is when knowing some mental math is probably going to be a benefit. So we're going to have log base 2 of 8 over log base 2 of 4. We can do log base 2 of 8 in our heads, and that's 3. And we can do log base 2 of 4 in our heads, which is 2, because 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the second power is 4. Well, that's the same as saying 1.5. So you can use either method to, com to evaluate the next two problems. So take a moment and pause the video and try the next two. When you return to the video, the answer will be revealed below each problem. And there you have it. A geology application. Take a moment and pause the video and see if you can solve this one on your own. When you return to the video, all the work and the answer will be revealed below.
And that ends our video lesson on properties.